Welcome to CivilNet. My guest via Skype from New York is Professor Hamid Dabashi. He is the Hagop Kevorkian Professor of Iranian and Comparative Literature at Columbia University. Professor Dabashi, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, you recently wrote an article uh, in Al Jazeera called Turkish Genocide Film, An Epic Too Late. Uh, it was about Fatih Akin's uh, latest feature film called The Cut. And for our viewers who haven't heard about it, Fatih Akin is a Turkish filmmaker and he made a movie about the Armenian Genocide which recently premiered at the 71st Venice International Film Festival. Um, so I read your article. Um, I'm just curious, have you seen the film? Yes. You, you have seen the film. Um, you talk about it being a particularly poignant turning point. Uh, as we know, the Armenian Genocide is not recognized by Turkey. There is a policy of denial by the Turkish state. Uh, in recent years, particularly following Harant Dink's murder in Istanbul, um, there has been a, a movement, albeit small, among intellectuals, uh, left-wing, progressive segments of Turkish society to recognize the Armenian Genocide. Um, in your article, you were somewhat critical of this film. Could you explain to us why? Well, I have two uh, perspectives on the film. Number one, as a public event, as a Turkish filmmaker, despite the fact that Fatih Hakim, as you know, is located in Europe, in Germany, Nevertheless, the fact that a Turkish filmmaker has made a film about the Armenian Genocide, I think is socially, politically, historically, is a very significant event uh, for the recognition of the Armenian uh, Genocide. However, when I look at it from cinematically, uh, particularly in light of, as I say in the article, a magnificent film on Armenian Genocide by Atem Magoyan, the Armenian filmmaker based in Canada, I think uh, Atem Magoyan has put such a powerful grip on the notion of how do we tell the story of the Armenian Genocide, that this kind of uh, epic filmmaking with this specific kind of narrative, which is very teleological, a father has lost uh, his family and is looking for it, will not do justice to the historical complexity of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, given the fact that it is such a defining trauma for Armenia, both in Armenia and in uh, in the diaspora. So if we look at it from the perspective of the public sphere in Turkey to come to terms with the Armenian Genocide, it's a very significant event. But you also say that, uh, and you know, many would agree with you, that neither Turkey nor Turkish society is ready to publicly acknowledge uh, the Armenian Genocide. Now, um, having said that, there, were, there was some criticism from within Turkey. Uh, obviously, I'm not talking about the nationalist elements uh, that uh, issued death threats to Akin. That, that was expected, I think. But there were some who were criticizing the film, saying that, uh, from a different perspective than yours, saying that it only talked about the deportations, as it were, and not about this grand narrative that you also mentioned in your article, that it really didn't speak to the heart of what the genocide was about, or, or yeah. That is equally significant and important uh, criticism. In my opinion, the Armenian genocide has multiple hearts. There is no one heart in it. There is an aspect within Turkey, namely where almost one million uh, human beings were uh, slaughtered. The consequences of that genocide in the Armenian diaspora, and also for uh, Armenians in Armenia proper, precisely because it is a multifaceted phenomenon, a defining trauma for the Armenian people today around the world. There is no one way of telling that story. It is that recognition that has to be built into any narrative that we we choose to uh, 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 operate. And, and with do you it. think he didn't he he, he didn't recognize the sign in, no. in this film? I, I don't. I, as I as I said. Uh, so far as Turkey is concerned, so far as the public awareness of the Armenian Genocide and public discussion of the Armenian Genocide within Turkey is concerned, this is a fine and significant step forward. But so far as the actual phenomenon of the Armenian Genocide is concerned, which is the defining moment of Armenian people today uh, er around the world, the film comes nowhere near telling the complexity of that issue. Uh, and yet, there were uh, criticisms of Ararat, of Adomegoyan's film, saying that he tried to build in too many narratives in that story. Because, uh, as you said, I think that any movie, any endeavor, any initiative 
to try to capture the one single thing that represents what the Armenian genocide was and means and continues to mean for those of us who are you know, the, 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 depend, the survivors or the children of survivors. Um, is it possible to say that any one film could not do justice to this particular period in our history? That is true, but if we com compare Atim Agoyan and, and Fatih Harkin's films, for me, the significance of Atim Agoyan is that it begins in contemporary life. A young Armenian has come back to Canada and has an encounter with the, with the Canadian uh, custom officer, and from there, Atim Agoyan begins to build up a narrative which is both contemporary, in, that is today, in its resonances, and yet begins to talk about the trauma of writing about uh, a trauma. This to me is far more accurate and has resonances with contemporary Armenians than rather than historicizing and archiving it. The problem that I have with Fatah Hakoyan, uh, uh, Fatah Hakin, is that it, it historicizes it. It's something that happened back there and, uh, you know, a, a father is looking for, uh, for his children right now. Whereas the, the trauma of the Armenian Genocide is not something that happened back in the, uh, in the 20th century. It continues to resonate, continues to have significance for contemporary Armenians. Professor Dabashi, I haven't seen the film, so, uh, you know, I've conducted interviews about the film and I do it uh, uh, quite blindly, if I may say so. And, uh, but are, are our expectations of any Turkish filmmaker um, too high? I mean, for any Turkish filmmaker to even uh, have the courage, because I believe it takes courage, to make a film about the Armenian Genocide, something that is, as you again mentioned in your article, that while it was very taboo, continues still to be taboo in Turkey. Could we not say that this was a, a very courageous step? Uh, uh, listen, within a uh, limited uh, domain, yes, it was courageous, and he's getting benefits of that courage, if that it is. But to me, the primary issue is the Armenian Genocide and resonances of the Armenian Genocide among millions of Armenians around, uh, around the world. That is, the courage is to come to terms for the Armenians with the legacy of the Armenian Genocide. If a novelist, a filmmaker, a poet uh, deals with these consequences, uh, it's fine. But we should not have a misplaced concreteness, where is the courage? The courage is not with uh, a Turkish filmmaker, despite the fact that I'm, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I admire Fatih Hakim's work, uh, but with the actual trauma that this piece uh, uh, points to. Um, you say here in your article, um, the key issue in telling any epic story of dispossession, exodus, catastrophe, or holocaust is precisely the manner in which the story is to be told in the literary and cinematic context when all such grand narratives have become suspect. So your argument is that because it was, I don't want to say quagmire, because it was set uh, in a period of history that has no resonance today with us, with those of us who are the children of survivors, therefore exactly. it has limited value? It has limited resonances. I mean, you, as a, uh, as a young Armenian, any young Armenian, should be able to sit in front of a film and don't think that, he, that she or he is walking through the aisles of an archive, through the aisles of a, of a museum. Uh, I'm against the museumization of archi archiving the Armenian genocide. This is a living, palpable, gushing wound on the Armenian uh, uh, body. And we have to recognize us for that. And this is my, the reason of my admiration, not only for Atim Goyan's cinema in general, but because of the way that he went after the telling of the uh, story of the Armenian genocide, that we see the traces of that gushing boon on individual Armenians without actually, I mean, the, the, as you know, in uh, Ararat, he does a kitschy uh, piece that we think is a film, that actually is not a film, is somebody is trying to make a film. To me, that cinematically, narratively, aesthetically, politically is far more powerful because we come to terms with the consequences on living human beings of an slaughter done to their uh, parental generation uh, early in the 20th century. To me, that is far more significant. Yeah, I certainly see your point. We often say that a genocide denied is a genocide that continues, and those of us who are descendants certainly feel that. Uh, well, uh, you know, Professor Dabashi, thank you for this fascinating interview. You gave us certainly a different perspective uh, on, on what the film 
uh, meant, what it is, what it can be, what it perhaps lacks. Uh, but none of the sense, this is part of the discourse and the platform that we create for these kinds of discussions. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'd like to remind uh, our viewers that my guest via Skype from New York was Professor Hamid Dabashi. He is the Hagop Kevorkian Professor of Iranian and Comparative Literature Studies at Columbia University. Stay with CivilNet. Mm -hmm.